Hey guys, how's it going? It's Atsu. So today we've got a special guest, Ichino-san. Thank you very much for coming to my channel. Thank you. Delighted to be here. So uh, today I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about English studies and that kind of stuff. But before we start doing that, uh, it would be great if you could introduce yourself quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So my name is um, Ichino-san. Um, my father is Vietnamese. My mother is Japanese. And I was born in Japan, uh, but when I was three years old, um, I moved to Australia because of my father's work and I spent 20 years in Australia so I got all of my education there. I graduated um, with a bachelor's in education. Um, so after graduation I could have taught like Japanese in Australia but mm. because I love Japan so much I decided to come back and have a little fun first. Right, so you came back how many years ago? Um, so when I was 23, so that's around 14 years ago. 14 now. years ago. Yeah. And you haven't um, returned to Australia no, for a long haven't. time. No. Which is uh, very interesting because yeah. you grew up in Australia mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that you have like personal connection yeah. uh, to Australia as a country and also people living there, but you haven't gone back. Haven't gone back. For no. a long time, <laughs> no. which is really strange in my opinion. <laughs> right. But like, where does that really come from? Why haven't you? Um, so as I said, I think I, I prefer like living in Japan, um, I love the culture, I love the language. It's not that I you know, hate Australia or anything like that, yeah. but I just didn't feel um, completely comfortable mm -hmm. in the Australian culture because as you probably know, um, you know, there are lots of extroverted people in Australia. And, right. Yeah. So they have like, you know, barbecues every week yep. and they play, play sports mm -hmm. with their friends and things like that. But I prefer to, you know, stay indoors and just read manga mm -hmm. and also play video games. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, yeah, feel much more comfortable in Japan. Mm. But I assume there are a lot of introverted people mm. in Australia as well that mm. you can hang out with yeah. and like read books together or mm. play games together. Yeah. But didn't you want to just, you know, stay in touch with them, like hang out with them and have fun together? Because mm -hmm. it's not like 100% of Australians are extroverted, True. right? Yeah. Um, well, I do still keep in touch with mm -hmm. yeah, several of my good friends. Um, I sometimes get emails from them. Um, but yeah, it, it is a good point, you know, not everyone's extroverted. But I suppose I, I kind of just ran out of maybe things to do there. Right. <laughs> if you live there for 20 years. Yeah. Um, it's not as if, you know, they have like the world's best entertainment. Absolutely. Um, like, yeah, so I guess things just started to seem a little routine. Mm. Um, yeah, there, there wasn't much new stuff to do. Right. Whereas in Japan, um, I just felt there's much more, um, yeah, things are much more interesting because, for instance, you know, we've got the, the 47 prefectures and, yep. you know, each has their own kind of characteristic. Mm. Whereas, I don't know, if you go to Australia, it's not that much different wherever you go. Probably. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that might be another reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, interesting. So you wanted to have a bit of a fresh air yeah. um, in your life and you know, like change tack a little bit to yeah. see like what's going to happen to your life by yes. you know, doing something different. That's right. And you became an English teacher mm -hmm. and you've got uh, quite a lot of batches on your <laughs> Yeah. Um, passed a lot of exams, mm -hmm. uh, taken a lot of exams. and. Yeah. And you know the hang of like how to best prepare yourself for yeah. those exams. Mm. Uh, where does that motivation really come from? I'm oh. wondering. Okay, so um, it's not as if I, I love exams, right? Mm. So, <laughs> well, I don't hate them, but the reason why I decided to um, get like full marks in these exams is because I felt like I needed to, um, well, I need to pretty much, you know, become a little more well known if I want to make mm -hmm. an impact on Japanese education. So, so one of my like ultimate goals is to have like you know a huge influence on Japanese education. Wow, um, ambitious. Know. Yeah, I so like it. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> cause a revolution. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in order to do that, you know, I I could make videos and say this is how I want to change Japanese education. But who's gonna listen to me? They, they're gonna they're gonna think, all right, who is this guy? Right, right. So mm -hmm. in order to prove that I'm worth listening to, mm -hmm. I thought maybe I should at least somehow prove that you know I am. Pretty proficient in English and yep. I thought one of the easiest ways to prove that is to get you know a really good score in these exams right so it's like like one of the best ways to kind of stand out in the market yeah. right yeah. because 
like it's very easy to understand like mm -hmm. for people to kind of recognize you as like someone who is yeah. proficient in English yeah. and most likely you know, like having a batch saying that mm -hmm. you know I've got a full score on the TOEIC exam yeah. or something yeah. like that it's like the easiest mm -hmm. way to communicate yes. that message so, yeah. so it's not like you're really into taking the exams <laughs> but rather you just took it just for the purpose of kind of presenting yourself yeah, in a yeah, nice yeah. way yeah. Right. Okay. So it's like a means rather than ends, you would say. Narahodo. Yeah. Well, Shudan to mokuteki no chigai desu ne. Hai. Narahodo. So moving forward, mm -hmm. so after, so now that you've kind of established yourself as someone mm -hmm. who's taken lots of exams, mm -hmm. who knows the uh, way to uh, prepare students for those exams, and like you've got your uh, YouTube channel up and running as well, where you share a lot of tips about like how to study English and that sort yeah. of stuff. What's going to be your next step? Okay, well, um, how much time have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of things. <laughs> well, um, so, yeah, I just really want to make big changes to Japanese education. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm not going to say that, you know, teaching grammar and comprehension is wrong, but mm -hmm. I think we probably can't deny that there are lots of people who come out of, you know, six years of education at school not feeling very confident about using the language. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's undeniable. Um, but I think one of, one of the joys of learning language mm -hmm. is to actually use it and yeah. communicate with others, express mm -hmm. your opinions. But unfortunately, most people don't seem to have the confidence to do that. And I think that's a real pity. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just thinking, you know, what, what, what can I do to try and change the situation? And I think it's probably going to be a little too difficult to just rely on the English education system, mm -hmm. um, like of schools. Yep. Because I think one of the characteristics of schools is that they have, they have to grade their students and they have to kind of rank them mm -hmm. so that they can say, all right, you know, you guys at the top, you can go to this university. Okay, you guys, you can only go to this university. So because there's always this system of grading that's going on, I don't think it's compatible with like speaking and writing. And the reason why is because in order to grade someone, you need to do it as objectively as possible. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you know, the best way to do it is to give them grammar questions, comprehension questions, yeah. because there's always right or wrong, mm -hmm. right? Whereas if you have like speaking assessments or writing assessments, there is no right answer. Yeah. So it's very difficult for the teachers to mm. give their students grades. You know, um, they might be biased towards some mm. students mm. and yeah, but so I've got gets, to say a lot of yeah. teachers are not really competent enough to oh, that's also their yeah. speaking abilities. Yeah, I probably so. another issue mm -hmm. as well. So that's why it's probably going to be really difficult to try and introduce like more speaking and writing into schools. And so, you know, we probably have no choice but to rely on other things mm -hmm. such as your wonderful channel. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, your videos. I mean, this. I, I'm sure they're so helpful and you're such an inspiration to so many learners. So I think, yeah, we're going to have to really start relying on something other than school as well. Of course, we should try and change or mm. make additions to the school curriculum. Yeah. But yeah, try and look for these other alternatives so that people will start right. feeling confident using mm. English. So I understand that you think that it's a problem that they are just too focused mm. on grammar rules and like vocabulary and that mm. kind of stuff and they are missing the point of doing that, mm. like learning grammar and vocabulary, mm. because they are learning that to be able to use English, mm. ultimately, mm. but they are kind of like defeating the purpose of learning right. English by right. doing that, right? Mm. So I understand that you see that as a problem, mm. then what's going to be a solution? I don't think there is going to be a silver bullet or anything, mm. but like how you think that you can make the change? Mm. How are you going to cause that? <laughs> how are you going to cause a stuff? Right, right. So um, one word is probably like mindset. We need to change people's mindsets mm -hmm. because I think everything begins in the mind um, and with emotions and with motivation. So if somebody is like completely motivated to learn English, mm -hmm. then they can probably do it like by themselves. Yeah. You know? Because we've got so many good resources out there. We've got great textbooks. You know? And as I said, videos from people like you. So, you know, if they're like committed enough, mm -hmm. I think it's quite possible for them to acquire like a certain proficiency of the language on their own, like even without help. So I think it's all about um, making people understand like why they should actually study English. And because probably most people in Japan or most, most students who study 
English and Japanese schools think, you know, well, you know, why do I need to learn English? I'm probably、mm -hmm. not, I'm, I'm going to live in Japan all my life,、mm -hmm. probably not going to leave,、uh, probably not going to use it. So, because they don't have that motivation, I don't think, you know, they'll be willing to spend any time outside of school, for instance, studying English. But once they do understand, like, how much learning a language and learning English can, like, change your life,、mm -hmm. I think then things are going to start to change. So, right. Yeah, I want to cause, like, a Revolution in terms of mindset. Right. And one way to change their mindset、mm -hmm. is to deliver that message through、yeah. your channel.、Yeah. That's one of the things that you've been doing.、Yeah. You've got a lot of things planned in、yeah. your head that you are planning to implement over the、yeah. next couple of years or so、yeah. in Japan to、yes. make that happen. Yes. Okay, let's see what happens. Yes. And yes. yeah, looking forward to seeing that. Thank you very much. Interesting. はい。ということで、今回は一応さんにゲストに、えー、来ていただきました。えー、また、もう一本ぐらいうちの方でも動画撮ろうと思ってますし、一応先生の方でも動画撮ろうと思ってますんで、もし興味あったら見てみてください。それではまた次の動画でお会いしましょう。今日はありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。バイバイ。